Once upon a time there was a king who was very upset with his life. He had 30 queens, and the entire kingdom was his. Still, the king was very sad. While living with the queens, he was remembering the days of his youth when he had no attraction towards women, when he didn't even know anything about sex. Remembering that old moment, the king's eyes became moist. The king, who was always full of energy and freshness, was now old. But even after growing old, he could not get rid of his sexual desire. Although he had won thousands of battles during his rule, he had not been able to conquer his mind till date. The king had surrendered himself to his lust. Now the king was worried because the young man had now become old. He could have died at any time. While people think of salvation and liberation after seeing death in front of them, the king is surrounded by thoughts of lust. There were thirty queens, one after the other, very beautiful. And he had given birth to children with each queen. Why does his mind get restless even after enjoying so much pleasure? Why do sexual thoughts still keep coming to his mind? The king started wondering whether he would carry the burden of lust with him even after death. The king was a believer in the theory of the soul, so he thought that if he did not get rid of his sexual desires, his soul would wander endlessly. I must leave the thoughts of lust here to liberate my soul, the king thought. The king was always worried about how he could get rid of his lust, and hence one day, the king called a meeting of all the scholars in his palace. Naturally, the topic of discussion in the meeting was sexual desire. The king had made his minister announce in the entire city that any scholar who would satisfy the king's mind would remain as the king's advisor for his entire life. Now, there was excitement among all the scholars of the city. On the day decided by the cabinet, all the scholars of the city reached the palace. Arguments started in the meeting. The first question the king asked was, what was the real meaning of celibacy? Some scholars replied that a person who has never enjoyed sex in his life is a real celibate. Other scholars objected to this and said that it was possible that if a person has had sex, but at present, he has given up sexual pleasures, then he is also called a celibate. In reality, only the one who gives up sexual pleasures after having sex is a celibate. He is called a celibate. The king was not able to get satisfaction from the answer of any scholar, and the scholars were engaged in arguing among themselves. After some time, a very unique scholar named Raj arrived there. There were two very beautiful women along with Raj. Seeing that, all the other scholars started laughing. One scholar even stood up in the meeting and said, How can a person who is himself suffering from lust, free others from lust? On this, Raj smiled and asked him, Why do you think that I am suffering from lust? The scholar told him, you think we are blind? Do you think we are fools? You are entering the royal palace here with two young women. What does it mean? It simply means that you are a person suffering from lust, am I wrong? Raj smiled and replied, Sir, both the girls you are talking about are my sisters, and they also have a deep understanding of sexuality like me. Raj addressed the king and said, O oh king, a true celibate is someone whose perception no longer differentiates between a man and a woman. When a person's sexual desire ends, he becomes completely celibate. For him, everyone's body is a human body. Leave alone any sexual thoughts arising in him after seeing a woman. He will not even be able to differentiate that she is a woman. For that type of person, every living soul is of one type. Physically, he will never be able to differentiate between them. Raj Further said, All the scholars present here in the meeting, when they saw these two girls with me, it became clear that no one here understands the meaning or significance of real celibacy. The king found this scholar to be very unique because he was telling only what a person naturally understands. That's why the king was impressed and asked the next question. After all, why does a person need to follow celibacy when he can enjoy life by enjoying sexual pleasures? Then why should he follow celibacy? On this, Raj asked a question to the king. He asked, King, Tell me one thing, whether a tree or a seed is more powerful. The king replied, that a tree takes birth from a seed only. So, in this way, a seed becomes more powerful than a tree. Raj said, exactly, in the same way, our body also has many seeds capable of functioning. They contain immense energy, which creates a source of happiness for us. But by being obsessed with sexual desires, we keep destroying the seeds of truth in our work. They keep on wasting, and due to the destruction of those seeds, a person always remains lazy and tired. Remember, 
Our food makes our blood, from blood our flesh and our bones. And finally, the seeds of semen are formed, which are present in very small quantities. That is why it is not logical at all to destroy those seeds of semen because of sexual thoughts arising in your mind. By following celibacy, the power of those seeds gets absorbed in our inner form, which creates a glow on our face. It protects our body from diseases, and when these seeds of truth are converted into energy through meditation, they become a source of happiness. The king asked the next question, which was very important for the king's life. The king asked, how to get rid of sexual desire? Raj replied, O king, one who is wise knows that the more he drinks the water from the well of lust, the more thirsty he will feel. His thirst will never be fulfilled. Hence he never drinks the water of virtue in the form of lust. And if, due to family life, he is forced to drink water from this well, then he would drink water from the well only one or two times. Raj addressed the king and said, O king, in your life, you married thirty queens, but you must have also realized that the one whose thirst has to be fulfilled, gets fulfilled at one place only. But the one whose thirst is not fulfilled, whether he has sexual intercourse with thirty queens or one hundred queens, his thirst will still remain unfulfilled. Raj started explaining to everyone further, that if the goal of your life is not clear, then you will fall into all kinds of objects of enjoyment. But if your goal is clear, then you will focus your entire attention on achieving your goal, and not on enjoyment. King, you must have heard a saying, an empty mind is the devil's home. That is why a person should have a clear vision of the goal of his life. In the initial stage, lust is always generated by our thoughts. If we focus our thoughts in such a place that our goal can be achieved, then there will be no room left for lustful thoughts in our brain. Raj warned the king and said, O oh king, remember that sexual thoughts are more dangerous than sexual pleasures. They disturb the balance of our mind and our body. They confuse our vision with illusions. Sexual thoughts keep on influencing our minds. In the same way, just as a dirty drain makes the entire river dirty, if you want happiness in life and want to feel full of energy, then make a path for your mind with sacred thoughts. Raj finally gave the most important lesson by saying that if anything in life is consumed forcefully, the mind understands its eternal heat. The mind understands that this thing cannot give us pleasure forever. We have to choose some other path for ultimate happiness. And when the mind starts understanding these things, then automatically, the thoughts of lust start disappearing from it. That's why learn to enjoy things consciously so that you can understand their infinity. Hearing this, the king asked, What do you mean by enjoying pleasures? On this, Raj explained to the king and replied, A person whose mind is not fully engaged in one work is not able to perform any work perfectly. Therefore, we do not get the full results of that action. For example, when a person gives a donation to another person, then while giving the donation, his mind is thinking about achieving some goal. The same way, when a person prays to God, instead of worshipping Him with full devotion, he is praying to fulfill his wish. O King, think for yourself, if someone does not do any work wholeheartedly, then how will he get satisfactory results of that work? This seems like an impossible thing. O King, whatever is happening in life, let it happen. Ultimately, this will lead you to the ultimate truth. But whatever is happening, you should concentrate completely on it. If you concentrate completely, your attention will be focused there. And when your attention is focused there, the same work will start happening consciously. There can be no repentance after doing any action consciously. Repentance happens only when we do something while sleeping. And in the same way, we keep thinking while sleeping that we have to get rid of lust. But a man takes all these resolutions while sleeping. In the awakened state, there is no need to take any resolution. Because no human being can commit any mistake while being awake with open eyes. That's why instead of getting rid of lust, think about how you can enjoy it while remaining conscious. And once you consume it consciously, you will feel for yourself what changes this karma is bringing in you. If it is not right according to you, if you feel wrong, then you will leave it as it is. You will not need to take any resolution. But to reach this state, you will have to adopt the path of meditation. It is only by meditating that a man breaks his sleep. He comes in an awakened state, and when he comes in an awakened state, his mind starts concentrating completely on work. After that, after doing that work with all his mind, 
his mind automatically starts understanding the necessity of that work. The king was very impressed by the answers of this scholar, and made that scholar his advisor for his entire life.